Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over uh, a quick exercise on how to figure out if stocks are overvalued. Okay, so uh, I'm using here the Fidelity investment account, uh, invest, uh, Fidelity brokerage or Roth IRA works just fine. Um, so what, where I want to go first is research and we're going to click on stocks and you're going to land on this page here, Stock Research Center. Okay, so let's just click on one of these industries. Uh, or sectors and we, we basically want to pull a, a, a list of all the stocks in this industry so we can pull the data set. Uh, so I went ahead and clicked the find investments then we'll go to view all results and criteria and we should land on a page where we get the list of all the stocks and here we go. So the next thing I want to go to is valuation growth and ownership and we're going to go ahead and download this data set here and so we can view it on Excel. So you could use Microsoft Excel for this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're, we have all the companies here on the left. We're gonna go ahead and uh, hide these calls because we don't need them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, a filter because we wanna filter through all these stocks. And uh, I'm just gonna make sure I get all those companies. Okay, so you can go ahead and click sort and filter hit filter and what we're going to do next is we're going to organize these from smallest to largest so we'll go ascending order and and, and right away we're just going to delete all the companies where we don't have P ratios uh, because it's, we really can't tell uh, if these stocks are overvalued if we don't know the price earnings so we're just going to go ahead and delete these stocks here because we don't need them and we're gonna and what we want to do next now is we want to find out what is the average P ratio so we'll type in uh, average function and we'll take the average of all of these stocks and we get 98.97 P PE ratio uh, we'll copy the formula for the peg ratio so here we have the average uh, so the average P ratio for this sector is 98.9 uh, and the average peg ratio is 3.42 so we want to basically uh, figure out which one how, which one of these companies are overvalued so we're going to create a, a, an additional filter and we're going to say anything greater than 98.97 uh, we want to eliminate and then also uh, we're going to create a filter here anything greater than greater than three four two uh, we want to eliminate as well so we want to get uh, basically uh, we want to what we want to figure out next is we want to figure out what are the characteristics of a company that uh, make it overvalued so we're just gonna take a, a popular known uh, company here and let's just take Ross uh, Ross stores so we'll copy that symbol and we'll go back to our fidelity page here and we're just going to type this symbol in here, and it should take us to the stock landing page for Ross. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the main thing we want to look at here is, I mean, we, we, we want to get a kind of a, a brief uh, summary of the company. Uh, we can look at earnings to growth, and we can see how this company is performing in terms of earnings per share. So as you see in 2019, um, they've outperformed their their earnings expectations, except for in uh, first quarter of 2020, there was a minus 87 cents per share, and looks like look like looks like they made some ground in the second quarter, and then some ground in the third quarter. Uh, okay, if we scroll down just a bit, we can see P ratios. So Ross P ratio is 135 uh, times uh, compared to the industry specialty realty is 35 times and then if you compare it to the consumer discretionary sector it's 87 times so so right away i mean this should be a red flag anytime you see a p ratio that's higher than the industry average you kind of have to raise a question and find out you know what why is it higher than the um industry average now just because a company uh, has a, a super high p ratio you know doesn't mean that it's it it, it is uh, overvalued. Uh, you also want to look at the peg ratio, which is the, the price to earnings uh, divided by the recent growth of earnings per share. 
Um, if this number here is, you know, you look at the industry average, it's at 8.2. Um, you know, chances are this company is overvalued because it's not growing at the same rate uh, relative to what the company is priced at. Uh, so that's definitely another red flag you want to look for. Uh, typically, the, the the peg ratio you want to look at look out for is if they have you know a peer a peg ratio closer to one. So if if it's closer to one, then that's pretty good, even though there's a high P ratio. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the statistics. Uh, and, and figure out what's going on here. So key to, key statistics. All right, so let's look at the pay, pay ratio. So we know P ratio and peg ratio are, are above industry average, which which raises two red flags on, on this company being overvalued. Uh, let's see what else we want to look at. We can look at price of sales uh, trailing 12 month. Um, I mean, right there you see you're paying a higher price for the amount of sales, uh, higher than the industry average. Um, so it's not sure that's something you want to do. Uh, you can look at the, the uh, let's see here, we have a forward earnings per share long-term growth rate. Uh, this company is looking to grow 4% within the next three to five years. Again, less than the, uh, less than the industry average. You have, uh, let's say, revenue growth the last five years has been 7%, so it's been lower than the industry average. And then free cash flow, you have less cash uh, than the industry average. So again, uh, these are all strong indicators that you know you're paying a lot for this company, and it's not performing as well as the industry uh, specialty average, the specialty realty in industry. Uh, let's look at some more metrics. So again, pre-tax margins, profit margins are lower than the industry average, so not a good sign. Uh, you have return on equity, return on investments. Again, not not as good as the industry average, although you do see. There's a negative 261 uh, return on equity for the industry average. That could be because you know we're in 2020 and we're going through a uh, pandemic and there's uh, a huge uh, impact in, in the retail industry. Okay, uh, let's keep going further. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, debt to asset ratio. So it looks like this company you know has uh, lower debt than the industry average, which could be a good thing. Uh, looks like they have enough to to pay their short term financial obligations. Uh, so that's how you figure out, you know, if this company is worth it. Uh, and based on the P ratio, based on the price of sales and uh, the future growth of this company and the profits, uh, this company definitely seems overvalued. Um, and, you know, one last thing you can confirm is, is you know, if you want to kind of solidify your, your findings here, sometimes there's some research reports uh, from, from analysts and experts that will determine you know what what this current stock is rated uh, and a good source is uh, that I like to use is Zach's investment research and let's see what they've rated so they've rated uh, short term to one one to three month buy uh, long term to six month is uh, Zach's recommendation neutral um, again you can read through this report on fidelity uh, Zach's research and, and they'll kind of explain you know, what's their reasoning behind why they're rating this as a buy. I personally would not invest in this company simply because I don't think there's enough growth and, and, and profit margins to justify paying for the higher P ratio. And then, you know, at the bottom of the reports, they usually specify uh, exact, you know, a couple of reasons to buy and some of the reasons to sell the stock. Uh, so, and then if you scroll to the bottom, uh, they give you a, a, a chart here in terms of how they're valued. And you can always uh, kind of see uh, what their conclusion is. And it says here, our neutral recommendation indicates that this stock will perform in line with the with the market. Uh, and in terms of valuation, again, you're paying, you're paying a higher price just to get the same uh, performance as the market. So maybe you're better off just invest, you know, taking on less risk and in investing in a diversified fund, like a retail fund, and you'll still gain the same amount of, of returns, expected returns, of course. Um, so, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, this is just a quick exercise that I like to do to filter out stocks uh, and, and determining it, wh which ones are overvalued and which ones are undervalued. So thanks for watching. If you like this uh, video, please uh, you know subscribe, like. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments down below. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thank you.